right, so um, on today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, different guards, basic guards and stances uh, that we use in Sword and Shield. I had someone who's new uh, to the sport reach out to me and ask to learn more about it. He'd watched a couple of my videos, um, heard the terms A guard, uh, B guard, and I realized I'm not really explaining them. Um, so I'm going to talk about just some of the different guards. Uh, these are the terms that I learned. Um, these are not necessarily historically accurate or uh, terms that everyone uses. I'm sure there's different names for them. Uh, again, I'm always focused on the skill of learning to be able to fight more than the actual terminology. So if there's something else you want to call them, that's great. Either way, it functions the same. So I'm going to talk about the guards um, using my most common uh, sword and shield combination, which for me is a punch shield uh, and an arming sword. So here's my arming sword. Here's my punch shield. So it's a teardrop style shield. You can see behind it, I've got my gauntlet here. It extends past it, so when I'm throwing a punch, I'm driving this through into my opponent's face. The teardrop for me gives a little more maneuverability. Um, you're gonna find all different types, round shields, oval shields, rectangle shields, coffin shaped. Um, there's you know, all different types. The most common thing you'll see in armored combat though is it's strapped to your arm. In most cases for any kind of melee or, uh, or a, a pro fight situation, night fight situation, because you're gonna be using it as a weapon in most cases, as well as for defense. So strapping allows you to punch. It does limit your shield mobility a little bit because now it's not, again, if I didn't have it strapped in, I could potentially move the shield a lot of different places just with the gauntlet, but I wouldn't have that same kind of striking power. So the basic guards. Again, I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna use the opposite, which I think is good for video because you can really mimic the video and do the exact opposite and kind of like mirror it. Uh, so A guard is gonna be basically making an A. You can see my shield, the sword there. It's a little, I'm gonna change the angle so you can see it a little bit better. Of course, it would be blade out. Um, but I'm gonna turn it just a little bit so you can see it. So you see, I'm just making an A. I'm guarding both sides of my body with an A guard. So that's the form A. Uh, I'll show footwork in a second for it. Second guard, what we call B guard. Uh, more of something you'll see in a melee or if you're coming into a fight. Um, not in such a situation where you're kind of one-on-one -on -one and I'm A guard and we open up and moving around. I'm keeping myself covered on both sides. Uh, B guard is going to be shield up like that A and that sword resting on my shoulder. So again, trying to get as much defense as I can with my shield, but then ability to really throw that shot. Real powerful shots coming off the shoulder. So that's your B guard. So you got A guard, variation of this. I'm turn that blade a little so you can see it with the light. Um, but it's going to be like that, A guard, and then B guard. For me, what was most effective with my shield, I'm trying to kind of keep it right below my eye line and at an angle, right? I want to catch weapons on the edges of my shield across instead of the face if I can help it when I'm running a punch shield. I almost want to block like this. So I'm blocking out the weapon and keeping it out in front of me. Um, so either with my A guard or B guard, I'm doing the same thing. See B guard, I'll turn a little bit more. Uh, basically because I don't have any coverage if I keep it out here. So those are the two most common guards you'll see us do um, when we're fighting. The uh, third one you'll probably see is an open guard, very similar to A guard. It's going to be the shield up here for defense and that sword held out here. So that gives you a little more option for maneuverability of shots. You can do some different things without here, but it's almost like, hey, here's my threat, right? Shield up, here's my sword, it's moving around, what are you going to do? So an open guard. The fourth one, and I'll be honest, I've never used this so far in a fight. I don't think I'm good enough to use it yet or train in it, but it's a hanging guard. So a hanging guard is going to be basically my shield out here blocking my lower section and my sword hanging up here. So use my sword to block everything and my shield to block lower. So I think you can, you can do a lot more strikes out like this with it. I think for me, a hanging guard isn't as effective because I can't stab in this sword, uh, sport the same way. So I can't just kind of drive it into someone. Someone else can correct me on that, and they probably are great with it. I just don't use it yet. So those are the four most common guards. Um, again, that important thing is that shield is going to be up here, and I'm trying to cover part of my face, still have visibility, but get as much coverage as I can, and keep that shield out. So one thing you'll see, my shield's not in here. My shield's in here. Uh, it's much harder to maneuver, and I'm giving away more of my body. That shield is held out here. My guard is leaning forward. Slightly. Still uh, balance on my shoulder, but leaning forward, the sword's out, giving myself that space. B guard, same idea. Open guard, same idea. 
So you want to practice with that shield out. You can see the difference. This is my shield out and how little you have over here to hit. You can move it up and down. My shield in and you can see my whole face. Shield out, shield in. It's like a hockey goalie coming out of the net. He covers more of the net that way. The farther I push that shield out, the harder it is to get in and strike me. So I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about footwork. Uh, not too much. Again, I'm a lefty, so I flip everything the other way. But if I'm in an A guard, I can have either of my Kong almost basic stances. I can have that stance with sword uh, foot back. I can flip it and have sword foot forward. It doesn't matter really how I'm standing. I can slide and I can change. I can move. I can get back and forth. But that guard is going to keep there. B guard, same idea, right? You will find that you'll do variations. Um, but just like any sport, the first uh, thing you do is learn the fundamentals, right? You learn the basics that work for most people. And then you make adjustments based on you. I'll tell you an adjustment I'm making. As a lefty, I fight righties most of the time. Their sword shots are coming in here. They're coming in on my sword side. So what am I doing? Instead of a traditional A guard, I tend to pull my A guard this way. I tend to move my sword over because I'm not worried about many shots coming in on this side other than an on off side, which I can bring it up and down on. So for me, I'm turning it a little bit out and I'm guarding this way. If I'm guarding in B or open or A, I've moved my positioning a little bit. That's just for me. Again, that's something that works for me. Um, I'm testing and practicing with it and trying to get better at it. But again, most of the time, we'll come into a fight, traditional A, keep the arms moving, but keep you're making that form the whole time. Um, one thing I want to talk about a little bit is, the, again, different shields. So you're going to find most of us will run something like a punch shield with some variation, something strapped to you if you're going to run a sword and shield. You'll also see um, bucklers. So I have a buckler back here, an old beat-up one. So a buckler traditionally is a handle in the center like this. So it's, center, it's a center handle grip shield. So I'm going to hold it. I'm holding it out. And again, the same idea. If I'm holding here, look how little it covers my body. If I hold it way out here, it's very hard to get around. It's much more effective than a small shield. The thing with, um, with this is, again, it's not great for punching like this. So it's awesome for duels where you can't throw shots and you're just throwing the getting points for sword strikes you're using that as defensive doing a sword and buckler duel something like that many of us will do a similar thing which i haven't done yet so this one is i'll strap it here to my arm so it's more again like a punch shield so i can throw those punches as i come in and use that edge to drive it into my opponent's helmet uh drive it into their their shoulder to push them back i'll often drive cross shoulder so i can throw shots low and keep their sword occupied but i have to do that so Buckler or punch shield, uh, not much different. What you don't see a lot of is big heater shields, um, kind of like the big traditional knight shields. You don't see a lot of those in the sport unless you're doing specifically duels, um, basically because those bigger shields get tangled up in any kind of grappling or melee situation. They're hard to maneuver. So a smaller shield that you can throw strikes in close tends to most of us use. Uh, so that's my video on it. Again, you're basically working with that shield in that A guard, or in this case, as a traditional buckler, it's gonna still be causing that kind of an A, B, right? So I got it step back my shoulder, open guard, and then a hanging guard. Um, and the only other thing I would like to add to this and kind of talk about is maneuvering your shield. I'm gonna go back to my traditional shield that I'm a little more comfortable with. If you're new at this, my advice is, again, get those down. And when you start throwing strikes in your pal, the first thing you want to focus on is keeping your shield up and in position. That's like step one, because here's the most common thing that happens. Throwing shots, throwing shots, throwing shots, throwing shots. And my sword will shield is suddenly dropping down and it's in here. I don't even notice it. I'm so focused on onside, offside, onside. And I don't realize I've got to keep it up. Onside, offside, onside. So that's the first thing I do. Once you find that you're practicing that level and your shield is staying up in whatever guard you're doing, you're, you know, it's not moving around constantly, it's staying generally in position, at that point, um, start working on moving your sword and shield together. So, again, yeah, I'm no expert in this here. It's an area I'm still working on. But for me, like if I'm throwing an onside shot, where's my shield gonna go? 
what am I worried about? What am I worried about blocking if I go off? If I go offside, I'm bringing that shield off and across here. I'm bringing it up here, keeping it the sword in front of my shield. And I'll maneuver the shield around, but I want to get used to that kind of motion so that I'm always protecting myself. But step one, again, because the most common thing you see is as soon as the fight happens, that shield comes down because you're so focused on offense. So in your pal work, make sure you're practicing with shield up. You're keeping it in, again, focus mostly on A guard. Keeping it up. Are you really guarding yourself? Are you covering yourself? Moving it around a little bit. What works best for you? Where can you get good eyesight uh, versus protection of the body? Film yourself. Film your pal work. You'll be able to see the differences. And then when you start sparring, especially if you're doing foam kit stuff, spar just like you'd be fighting, right? So one thing I try to work on is when we're doing uh, soft kit sparring, is I try to throw shots that I'd be throwing in a real fight, right? I try not to throw like little like fancy little wavy tap things, and I got the point. I want to go, this is a shot I'd actually throw, right? This is a shot I'd actually throw. Because I want to make sure that I'm doing that in a way that's going to impact my real fighting once I get in kit. Uh, again, my name's Chuck Goodwin. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, message me, like and subscribe. You can follow me under Woodchuck Knight on Facebook as well. I will put a link into the Knights Hall where I train. Again, the place you really want to go if you want to get expert advice and get better at the sport, as well as the armoredcombatsports.com link, uh, because that will have the rules for the IMCF equipment, so you can see what's legal for shields. If you ever make your own, you're looking to purchase, you know what you need to do, kind of what are the requirements. I haven't gone over any of those other than to say that these are made, generally made of wood, wrapped in some sort of canvas uh, or some sort of rawhide edging, but they're, or a leather. And again, there's variations. You can even do steel shields in certain... Uh, situations. So you want to look at these specific rules before you buy any kind of weapon, talk to your regional commander, talk to your team, things like that. Um, that's it. Hopefully this is a little bit helpful and if you have any questions or any comments just uh, leave them in the, the comments below.